Um, hello, Eddie. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Um, look, dude, we've 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 managed to we've finally managed to get online. Um, yeah. Brilliant! At last! At last! Um, two people who have um, who've been around for a very long time uh, put stuff out and then waited a really long time to put anything new out. Um, two new songs. That was why you know we we. I tagged you in the um, um, old bollocks that I do with my my friend Steve Ivy, old head, right. um, and um, we're both you know both DBC fans from back in the day, and um, well you know you know our review, um, and yeah, um, I watched it very nice, uh, very happy. Yeah, cool, very... cool. Because you yeah you must have been hanging in there for a minute. We're obviously going, oh I'm not sure about this. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. You waited all these years, and then it's like oh okay, and then it grows on you. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, when you and I, I know about this, you know, put an album out, you know, first time in 24 years or whatever it was, um, that that's a level of expectation that no one can deliver on, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. You, you, we, we, um, we've been working on songs for like years, and then we kind of picked. We wanted to do about two or three, and then uh, Pendulum was definitely one of them, and then the other one we kind of changed at the last minute, and. Uh, decided to bring back an old song from our unreleased and just take a you know retake on it and uh phil had a vision on uh, a new new uh you know uh, like changing up the structure and the lyrics and everything and we kind of made it like a new tune so it's kind of like sirens 2.0 type of thing yeah but, uh, yeah you know we it's it's tough picking the songs i know that we're you know like really thrash metal and speed and everything and we kind of like I guess slowed down. We're more, I would say, more metal now, but uh, we are older too. <laughs> and we can't well, write like we're twenty year olds, right? So yeah, absolutely. Well, it, and and yeah. it would be, um, it wouldn't be authentic either. You know, it yeah, would be, yeah, so it would sound like, like some old guys trying to rhyme like teenagers. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we're working on new ones, and they're, they're maybe a little more upbeat, more, more uh, quicker tempo. So we want a variety. You know, and we, the idea is to keep releasing singles and singles, and then hopefully Monday. You know, if we have enough singles, we can do a CD type of thing, but it's got to be a variety, you know, so we don't want them yeah. to play all slow or all fast. But uh, those those were some crazy albums we did, especially Universe, you know. Oh, dude, I'm yeah. I'm so glad. we I'm so glad we're getting straight into that because um, like I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm, you know, Acid Rain was very much kind of like um, a thrash with a hardcore element. I'm yeah, always with my right? hardcore and my punk and with your first album by the way get this right we were label mates right so i I, I i had i you know i used to grab handfuls of your cds when i was oh. when i was at music for nations in london i'd be grabbing handfuls of the cds of the first album the second album um and giving them and giving them to my friends um and um the first album absolutely loved great this is like this is right in my lane and then the second album, I'm like, is this the same band? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah we uh, wow. That, that right. first album, yeah, that first album, we were really into like got into hardcore, and it was really a crossover of like every song had to have the hardcore beat. You know, every song, every song had to. We, we got you know, even if it's a slow song, we've got to do you know that, that at least end it with a fast part. You know, every song had to be fast. And then, and then we started to get into universe, and we we realized that for a band called Dead Brain Cells, that we, you know we got kind of technical. We did love Rush, you know, being Canadian and everything, and uh, we realized that we can memorize a lot more, and we we're jamming a lot more, like five times a week, so we could get a little more technical. And it got really technical, and uh, it just uh, really out of control there. So yeah, it's that it, it's that album is a real one off. I can't see us ever uh, imitating or doing that again. You know, we had one song, a recent song that had a lot of changes in it, but we're trying to, we want to kind of keep it more like, more like a, a real song, like verse, chorus, you know, something that you're going to yeah. remember because the universe is so out there that, uh, you know, one song has like 18 changes that you, it's, it's really like that album is like, it's just wild, just a wild album. <laughs> just, I, but I, but I know exactly where you're coming from because in that, in, in that time, you know, a lot of us were doing that. I mean, we put out our first full length album, The Fear, and there's and, and there's songs in there with like, you know, it's just like a riff factory. And there's so many changes of styles and riffs and all the stuff. But I've got to say, um, Universe for me is A, 
stood the test of time incredibly well. Um, and by the time I got it, um, or rather by the time I, you know, reached into the Music for Nations cupboard and picked it up, um, mm -hmm. I I was also into my Voivod. Um, my best mate was a huge Rush fan. And I I was so I was very easily able to transition from the first album and then go second album. And go, oh, this is completely different. But I like this just as much. In fact, I think I like this even more because it was, you know, it was already hitting several lanes that I was already in. Um, right. I mean, I was one of the few people <laughs> that, that, you know, that went, I love my hardcore. Great. Oh, I also love my Voivod and my Rush. So this just works perfectly for me. I was just like, yep, yeah, fine. And my, my, my best friend whose favorite band to this day is Rush was so impressed with the album that he wrote, um, he wrote a letter in great detail and posted it to you guys oh, really? telling you how much of um uh, of a fan he was and how much he 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 loved it because to this day to this very day he says it doesn't matter how many times you see in a press release some metal band will drop a rush reference and i have listened to every band who's ever dropped a rush reference and they 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 all fail there's only one band who's ever pulled it off and that's dead brain cells. <laughs> and for him to say that, mate, honestly, that's yeah. a real, real compliment. But I happen to agree with him. Honest. I, I, I just think it's, a, I think it's an absolutely incredible album. I, it's just, it's way ahead of its time. It's in a genre, all of its own. Yeah. It's, it's so ahead of its time that uh, I think maybe in 20 years, it'll be right on <laughs> Yeah, so I, I actually listened to it. I think a couple of months ago, after not listening it for like years, and uh, I'm like, this is just insane. It's just <laughs> well, like, what? Like, if you ask me, could you play yeah. those songs? I'm like, I don't really remember any of those. Like, some of those riffs, maybe we still do Genesis Explosion uh, when we play live and Primordium. Uh, we were doing Estuary for a while, but uh, out of all on Spotify, if you look at every song, like in the top ten songs, they're all from the first album. But our number one song is Genesis Explosion. You know, it's like one song from that album yeah. is our number one song. Like, you know, it, so it, it's 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 so weird. But also, like yeah. you say, you know, that Spotify gives you the that that's that's what that's what people remember you for. Because, you know, unfortunately for you, a lot of people will have got the second album and gone, oh right, you know, they've done a bait and switch on me. This is. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, people, you know, when you go to McDonald's, you want to make sure you get the Big Mac, and uh, they were getting the Big Mac, they they definitely got something different, and so we got a lot of uh, people that didn't like it, a lot of complaints, but then we have the people that are like, they just love Universe, you know, uh, so yeah. just, just to show you, you know, you can't please everybody, but uh, hey, it was I, what, just time, that's what we did, and, you know, that's it. I can tell, well, I can tell you something else as well, um, because... Um, I I spent a lot of time actually at the label um, back in the day. No, uh, wait, I'm just you said label mates. I remember we're, we were on combat in the US and then Rough Justice in in the in Europe. A rough uh, Rough Justice in Europe. Now Rough Justice was owned by Music for Nations. Music for Nations had Rough Justice under one flag. So you were Rough Justice, which was the hardcore label. Got it. Got it. Under one flag was the thrash label. We were on that. Okay. Um, and there was fun after all. Joe Satriani was there. Frank Zappa, Zappa Records was under Music for Nations. Music for Nations is what put out um, the first three Metallica albums in in Europe. So you were also oh, oh. you were also you know nearly label mates with Metallica for a while. Uh, <laughs> same as us, we were nearly label know. mates with Metallica. Well, let me, let me go change my uh, my profile here. Yeah, absolutely. Label yeah, mates gonna... with yeah. Metallica. Metallica, absolutely. So Music for Nations was the overarching company. That okay, owned all the, and 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 they just had an imprint for each different style of music. Um, so I, I spent a I and you know I I spent a lot of time down there and um I knew the label I knew everybody at the label really well and I still do because Martin Hooker was the guy who was in charge. Now Martin Hooker was the guy who um discovered Twisted Sister you know Under the Blade oh. their first album Secret Records that was all Martin Hooker. He was the guy that. You know, the basically the system released in the UK first before yeah. the US. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um and also Europe caught on to Metallica before 
um, America. America. Yeah. So Master of Puppets is is in large, large part financed by Music for Nations, not by the label in the States, not by Electra, okay. because that's the album where they broke big. Well, Martin and Music for Nations were convinced that that's what was going to happen anyway, because they could see it coming, because they could see that what would happen in Europe would happen. Yeah, Ride the Lightning was a phenomenal record. From that yeah. Came, yeah. 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 So they could, so they could see it coming. So they invested yeah. heavily in Master of Puppets. Yeah, those um, first three albums like are just amazing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's and that's why they're where they are today. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they were yes, yeah, so they were hugely invested in that, and and yeah. you know and, and Martin was the was the label boss, and as was um, um, his second in command, Jim Howard, and all. And so I knew a lot of them, and everybody honestly. Everybody was really excited about um, Universe. They were all like, "This is like they this guy, these guys have gone in a different direction, and it's going to blow people away." And uh -huh. um, and they they were they were really disappointed with the, the the press reaction, you know, the sales and everything. And they were like, you know, I remember because I I remember one of the, one of the guys in the label were like. Would you guys be interested in touring with these guys if we could get them over from Canada? I mean, like, absolutely, you know, because mm -hmm. they've got no, we've never played Europe. Yeah. No, I, I know, I know, but this yeah, is the kind of thing been. they did because they were because they were, um, they were a powerful label. They were, you know, they were bringing, you know, they were bringing death over to tour Europe. You know, mm -hmm. when with, with Combat weren't offering death any tour support to go to Europe, but you know. Obviously, the European label are going to do that. Um, so Death couldn't get tour support to play North America, but they could get tour support from their European label to go and play Europe. Um, and they, you know, so they were always keen to like, you know, be well, we played with zones. Death in the US. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I think we did a couple of shows. Maybe uh, it's all a blur to me, but it could have been the uh, CBGBs with Death. I, I, I know that. I know that it's all a blur to me, Theory. I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, there's like, I remember playing with Slayer. I remember playing with a few bands and you know, the tours. We did a couple of tours and then it's all like a few good memories, you know? Yeah, but also... But we it's... didn't have phones back then, so we couldn't film everything, which might yeah. be a good thing. I, oh, I think it's a very good thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, I, I think it's a very, very good thing. Um, but it, it, it is strange, though. At times, it's like... Um, it's like it's I I use the expression. It's like there's someone else's memories. It's like it's like I've had someone else's memories put in my brain. It's like, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, was that me? <laughs> did Acid Rain ever play in North America? Uh, we didn't, unfortunately. No, we did no, UK, we did Europe. Yeah, same story, yeah. Yeah, same story. Yeah. Did so we, so we got yeah, offers. you know, recently so, you know, actually we got offers. You come to the UK or come to the Europe, you know, with this and that, and then it never never happened. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'll put you in touch with a promoter to get you over here. But well, I I mean, as you can see from behind me, you know, we we toured with all you know, all the greats, you know, and you yeah, we played Salt with and Nuclear Salt and uh Dark Angel. Dark Angel. They, yeah, they came to see us when we were in San Francisco or California. Yeah, we got cool. a tour with Exodus, plot some jets, and you know, played with tons of bands, suicidal tendencies, funnily enough, when Rob was in the band. Um, mm -hmm. but it was getting over to the States and funnily enough, um, it was one of those label things, um, because I found out that I think it was, um, um, I oh, was it, I'm just trying to think of his name. Was it Steve Mason who was head of combat back then? Oh, wait, uh, wait, 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 Steve, definitely Steve. It, oh no, it wasn't Mason. It wasn't. No, I it's know. not Mason. I it's, yeah. If you maybe give me the, I know. Steve yeah. Sinclair? Yes. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. So he was in charge of um, combat at the time, and I was I was party to a conversation um, where John Connolly from Nuclear Assault, who was friends with Ludacris, also from New York, said to um, uh, Jem Howard when we were on the road one night, "Look, what's this deal with? Why can't you know? What's the deal with Ludacris? Why are you not releasing them? Because combat." sent everything over to Music for Nations and Music for Nations released it and vice versa. That was the deal. But Ludacris, Martin turned down for a European release 
And so John Connolly was like wanting to know why on behalf of his friends. And and Jem said, well, basically, um, Mar Martin didn't really, didn't feel it was right for the European market and didn't release it. Um, now, Ludicrous are a bit of a pet band of Steve's. So in retaliation, he's turned down Acid Rain, um, Acid Rain's The Fear for a US release. Oh, boy. So oh, and it was like one. and it was like that typical oh. sort of, you know, 80s um, music business experience where two, you know, two label heads go tit for tat. And the only people who lose are the bands. Unfortunately, yeah. 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 So funnily enough, I did. I have um, I, I have had a chance to um, uh, to to chat with the Ludacris camp over the years. Um, and um, yeah. They were they were unaware of that as well, but um, it's just one of those things, you know. That sucks. Yeah, but that's yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? So um, you you did mention playing live there. Is um is that is that something you you're doing much of? Uh, well, we played last October. We played at the Trois Rivières uh, Metal Fest. So that's that's a two uh, two nighter type of thing. We played the Friday night uh, in support of Martyr, which is pretty big here it's the guitars from uh Voivod, danielle's band oh god i did yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, they, I, they I saw live, so man it was sold out like over i saw i saw dan i saw dan like two three weeks ago um because he was over playing with forbidden um that's right yeah, yeah we played with forbidden and dan's actually played in dbc for one show oh right fucking hell i i I've, yeah I'm, i've met dan a number of times over the years yeah yeah he's um, a great guy and yeah, he loved the uh, universe that's <laughs> it yeah yeah so so yeah so um yeah we played uh but we're look we learning the sets uh a big deal for us guys and just we learn it and then we don't we don't you know we start working on new stuff and we slowly you know forget it and it's just we get rusty and we uh we have a new guitarist who we just uh, got a new guy, and if we had the right offer, I guess we don't really want to play small clubs. We we prefer if we can open up for bigger bands, you know, type of thing. Then it's worth yeah. our while. So this this show was worth it, you know. And but it's again, we're just focusing. Like we were supposed to jam on Thursday, didn't make it. But in a couple of weeks, we're going back and just work on that next tune, and just really, you know, go in the studio, hopefully record it and release it, yeah. and then move on to the next one. That's so far the plan. But if we had that right offer of law, you got to open up for this band and it's a bigger show, we'll we'll learn the set for sure. So it's not often, but uh, here and there, we'll say. Yeah, but I, I, I absolutely get it as well, though. It's like, you know, in everyone's career, we all go around and play the shitholes, okay? You don't yeah. want to do it a second time. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, get, we get offers and it's always like, you know, smaller clubs or even headlining the smaller clubs. But no, we would just not not worth it for us. We, we maybe we'll headline one day. Maybe at uh, where we used to play when we were uh, in Montreal back in the day in the eighties. We used to play the we used to, a club called the Fufun Electric, and it's a good size. Maybe one day there we'll see. But we haven't played Montreal in years, over five five years. I'd say. Right. So, something to do though. But it's and and is there still um is there still kind of you know a, still a, like a hardcore fan base out there? Yeah, for sure. We we definitely. Uh, we're, you know, after, after not, you know, breaking up or whatever, you know, it was, we were like not a band that got together in like 1986. And so we played from 86 to like 1990, 1991, and then completely stopped. And, but there was always some people that just heard about us or know us, not like it used to be, you know, but uh, we're still one of the known Quebec bands, you know, and especially Montreal bands from that genre of music, you know. So yeah. uh, definitely there are some, definitely some DBC fans still left and, you know, they follow us on Facebook and we all around the world. If I get a lot of, you know, still stuff to Europe and you know, it's, th thanks, thank God for Rough Justice because they got us known in Europe. So we still get, you know, some contact and, you know, everything from North America, mostly, you know, Canada and US, Europe. And then, you know, if you're going to get your Japan once in a while and some yeah. other countries once in a while, but those are the three. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, I posted a um, I posted a a um, uh, a, well, not a meme, but a question on um on the Acid Rain um, uh, social media over the weekend, which was mm -hmm. um, okay. name a band that 
you haven't heard of or that people might have not uh, not heard of or bands that deserve more success than okay, they yeah, than they oh. got yeah, yeah, and, yeah, um, i think have seen it and someone wrote that brain cells i think yeah 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 well it was it was a band called shy halud um oh, okay. and uh, and they're awesome and um and they're 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 big fan they're they're Big Acid Rain fans. The, the main dude in the band is a is a Big Acid Rain fan. I've had him on had him on the podcast. Okay. And um, and and I and I I just put there. I did put in it like you know coming to coming to the Talking Bollocks podcast soon. And straight away, there's like five or six people liked it, and I was like, great, because it, it's like I love doing in, I love doing these things where I've, um um I've got I've got a few interviews coming up. I can't name who. Okay. But I've got a few interviews coming up of of bands of the same era as as you guys that not a lot of podcasts are going to have on people who don't do a lot of interviews and i know that like overarchingly the listenership will be like uh who but i know for the people but i know for a good chunk of people they'll be like oh my god this is going to be fucking amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it's like it's 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 that you know i look i know if i'm going to be doing an interview you know with a band who's got a new album out that's you know got videos everywhere and you know that the 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 numbers are going to be right up there but then there's also the ones where the numbers don't matter it's the fact that the people who get it will get it to a way bigger extent you know, then people would normally be like, oh, it's another interview with that band. Right, right. Yeah, yeah well, here people I am. Who... I, haven't, I haven't done these often, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good, well, I'll definitely share um, it for sure. That, and it was so cool that, um, that, that listening to your, you know, your two new tracks, mentioning them on a podcast has led to us making this connection as well. Um, right. The fact that you you put two new songs out... Um, how long had you been had you been sort of trying to get to that place? But I, I ask as somebody who's in a band and know how how difficult it is to get people in a room to way, actually get a recording yeah. space and you know yeah. way in my opinion way too long. We we've been at it for like it feels like five to six years working on. You know, we had the idea was to do five songs and then you know what it, it's just taking way too long that we reduced it down to three songs. And then COVID hit, which really put us back because then we couldn't jam, you know. And then, uh, and then the drummer didn't want to play with us anymore, so we ended up finding a new drummer. And the, the new drummer is amazing. He's a, a a guy that we always wanted to play with. So he's um, he's in a few bands here in Montreal, like uh, hardcore bands and metal bands. And uh, so his name's uh, Louis Levesque. So he played with like Genetic Control and. You know a few other bands but that's how we knew him so finally we get him on board and then you know like i said we're jamming those you know trying to get three songs out and then we're down to two and but we finally after all the years we finally got in the studio and recorded it you know but then and even that took a while it took us almost a year to, to just get down the tracks and the, the, trying the singing and the solos and it was always something going against us you know i'm hoping the next one goes a lot quicker because we know what's in store and what has to get done but uh, yeah, I'm gonna say definitely. Yeah, it took years, yeah, years to get it. Yeah, I, I I know that feeling of you know how long did it take? Too long. Yeah, it's too like I even when DBC stopped, I had a, a solo project, uh, Kill of Rights, and that that took you know, but we did like 13 songs, so that took a good four or five years, you know. But this is just we just wanted to do two songs, or and it, and it just three songs, and it just took forever. Yeah, yeah. So, but. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's finally done and we got those lyric videos out and, uh, you know, we got some, some great response. You know, some people, you, you're not going to please everybody. Very little negative comments, though. Everybody, you know, like like you said, it grows on them. And, you know, yeah. we had this amazing guitarist do the solos for us. He's uh, he's not permanently part of the band. He's in a band called uh, The Mize of the Crown here in Montreal. And we heard him and actually our producers, the guy who said, I'll set you up with a great, amazing guitarist. And uh, he did a fantastic job. So it brought us to the next level, I think, solo-wise, you know. But uh, yeah, it took a long time. But like I said, I'm hoping the next one's going. I, I think there's also a, there is a certain amount, of, like you said, about not many, not, not many negative comments. I think there's a certain amount of um, when people have been waiting so long for something, it's like, yeah. look, 
it, like it, it, as long as it's not shit. Shit, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. With the and I, and, and yeah, don't get me wrong, you know I love you know I love what you've done, but like, right. yeah, there is a certain amount of people out there is like new stuff. Okay, is it shit? No, great. Okay, in that case, good. You know. Yeah, we you know like I said, and Phil Phil's very important for Phil for you know he says he's got to write stuff that he's gonna want to listen to too. You know, you can't we we'd love to just you know we can't just do this do that it's 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 got to be something there i don't know and we thought those two songs had something there. i totally agree with that um it's got to be something you want to listen to because i mean you know if you think back to you know through the through the fog the haze of time if you think back to where you first started being in a band it's yeah, like yeah. it's because listening to music wasn't enough it's yeah. like I, I'm I'm buzzing off of this stuff. It's incredible. Yeah, we were I love excited, it. Excited, man! It was it was Slayer that did it for us. Once we once we we, we liked Metallica, but then once we heard Slayer, we're like it, it was kind of like the picking and the, the the whole vibe of it. You know, it was really fast, and we're like, wow, this is freaking. So we were kind of like the Canadian Slayer, also in a way, and combined a little. You you could hear on our first album, it's you know we were a lot of hardcore influences and. But you can hear a little bit of Slayer, and then you can hear start to hear some of that technical stuff coming in with some of the tunes, you know. And that's that's where it evolved into the universe. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, and I, I Venom, remember Venom, but <laughs> when Venom oh, yeah. came out that album, that was like, what the hell's this, you know? Oh yeah, I mean, well, I I know the guys in Venom well. Um, yeah, that UK band, right? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, yeah, um, and you know, Abaddon, the drummer, was. Uh, tour manager on that tour uh, oh, wow, okay. which so yeah and i've known him ever since um but it, funnily enough slayer did it for me as well um and it, it was it was kind of like also i think it you know you you listen to that kind of music and you just you just want to you don't want to rip it off you know you don't want it it's like you don't want to you don't want to um be in a covers band when you're a band that does original stuff Right, right. You you want to write stuff like that, but you don't. Yeah. But you you but you yeah, don't want to. You don't want to just ape it. You want to exactly. And, Everybody and, gets influenced by everybody. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's just find it's finding that space. And of course, us being Brits, you being Canadian, you, you can take that influence, and it's not going to sound directly like them because they're from the states, and that's who they are, and that's what they do. And you can kind of start forming your own, you know, your own sound. And I just remember, as a, you know, in those those formative years when you're hearing bands like Slayer and, and Voivod as well for like the first time and just thinking, right, there's there's no there's no limits in this music. Yeah, it, was, a, it was an exciting time. Let me tell you, like I get uh, Voivod, even Metallica, you know, I ended up seeing Metallica at the like, small venues, got to meet them, too, and. That, like fight fire with fire it was like what the, i remember we, we went to a, like a hardcore show or something and it was like it's just started to happen the long hair start to go to like these hardcore shows you know it was like a yeah. big no-no but i remember us in this middle listening to fight fire with fire and they're going what the hell is this all, all the all the punks and the hardcores and like you knew something was gonna happen you know and then hardcore just like it just died in montreal it just like everybody started to come to our shows and and uh, it really became like a like DRI would come and you know bands like that. But but that that first Slayer album blew us away. And then once we heard Hello Waits, we were like, oh my god! Like it was just actually it was Haunting the Chapel when we heard Chemical Warfare. We're like, oh my god, that picking. Yeah, it was just that right away. We knew that. And again, we were seeing them at small venues, and we just knew this is this is the type of music. After all these years, this is what we want to do. We love Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, but this was like just different, you know. Yeah, I but I I also think I mean how how old are you? I'm sixty. Right. Okay. So we are slightly older than me, but my my feeling was exactly that as well. Love Maiden, love Priest, but this stuff just seemed to have more energy. It's it, yeah. it's it, and it sounds corny, but it, it spoke to me more than yeah, the yeah. other stuff. The other stuff seemed to be now seemed to be outdated. As much as I loved Maiden and Sabbath, yeah, exactly, yeah. It kind of had the riffs with like uh, I think Jeff Hanneman said it or or could have been Kerry King, but it's like taking the riffs of metal and then the energy and the you know and the speed of hardcore and like really like bringing them together. You know. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it kind of made a new sound, you know. Today, everybody's used to it. Actually, now, now it's like with some of the modern. I don't know if you listen to some of the modern stuff. I I got into some of the bad. Phil doesn't listen to them at all, but uh, I I kind of got into some of like Lamb of God or Kill Kill Switch Engage, you know, like some of that. And uh, as I lay dying is the new one that like just like listen to it. I'm like, why am I even playing? You know, <laughs> I just don't know. Or some of the stuff is like just crazy. The riffs is just nonstop, and the dr -dr 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 yeah. It's like wow, mental. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, is like when when we were coming up, like the the bar is so much higher now. You know. Yeah, it, yeah. It, and it's tougher and, to get known and heard. It's like you know, you release those songs, and then like, yeah. if you don't plug them, it's like it's gone. It's forgotten in your feed. It's just forgotten. It came and went. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, and and mm -hmm. this is this yeah. is the thing about being a legacy band, which I'm like, you know, I'm. To completely unashamed of it's it's like no i like that legacy wait. band okay. <laughs> yeah 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 you can have that man <laughs> okay, old school i heard many times but i'll take yeah that. yeah but it's it, it, it because well it's your it's your legacy keeping you alive because yeah, yeah, yeah. because you can put two songs out um after all these years and probably have more impact than you know a band who's been working the last 10 years you know, month in, month out, putting tracks out, and and like you say, it just disappears into ether because and there's just so many bands now. Eh? Back then, yeah. you know, there was a certain handful, group of few labels, but now it's like, it seems like there's a million, million bands out there. Oh, for everybody who slates the category, old days, right? you know, for yeah, everybody yeah. who slates the old days, and you know, labels being tastemakers and deciding who get who's good enough and who isn't, and all the rest of it. Well, that was great because at least that it was a manageable amount of 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 music that people could hear about. But now, without those gatekeepers, it's the opposite is true. Now, everybody can release everything. I mean, I was going through a Spotify playlist of stuff that came out on a Friday, and I realized there was at least two metal bands there that weren't. They were one guy. They were <laughs> one guy who's who's programmed some drums, played bass, played guitar, done some solos, done some vocals, put it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it was like, you can tell it's one guy cause it's all of it is pretty bad, you know, apart from the program <laughs> drums, all of it. And, and it's just like, dude, you just like, you're, you're filling up, you're filling up the feed here. There's people <laughs> genuinely putting good stuff out. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm trying to get yeah. on playlists. That, that's all new to me too. You know, the whole Spotify playlist thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, um, to, I don't know if it helps. I don't even know if, should I do some advertising? I don't even know if Facebook advertising, Spotify advertising. Then there's so many of these companies that will, will get you streams and you know, now it's all about streaming. Yeah. And, yeah know. We'll get you streams. We'll get you subscribers. We'll get you yeah, followers. Is it and... Or is it real? I don't know. You know who do you believe in? Uh, I try to, uh, any reviews? Uh, does this, uh, you know, is this company legit? Or, yeah. You know, yeah, no, I totally and, agree. And and some, and they call it bots or something. I'm like, what the fuck? Someone's <laughs> listening. Robots are coming in and, and listening to it. That I'm well, well, the other the other side of um uh, of what we're saying as well about bands coming up is, is the other side of it is doing your growing up in public. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, we had we had demo tapes. We we traded tapes and people you know, connoisseurs of the genre traded tapes, it's, you know, okay. everybody traded tapes and there oh, were yeah, trusted opinions, sure. yeah, yeah. you know, and if you put the effort into putting a magazine together, you better know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I, can you imagine, put, you know, your first demo, putting it online, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, not just in your town, but everybody across the world listening to the first four songs that you've ever recorded. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, everyone's doing their growing up in public. You know, they're yeah. instantly they're open to massive criticism. Mm. You know, or, or in or alternatively, sometimes as well, masses of misplaced um, positivity as well. You know. Yeah, yeah. We had to wait for a magazine. Like I'd check every month. Oh, did a magazine come out with a review? You know, when the album would come out. Or the advertising would see like the combat advertising. We're like, okay, what's being advertised? Yay. We got one pinup, I think, in one of those metal magazines. I still have it somewhere. Yeah. 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 Have you, um, have you, ever, have you ever found, um, have you ever found on online reviews from like, 
20 years after the album came out and stuff like that no not really no it's i still have like i kept i kept all the magazine got a stack of magazines right here of of all I, the reviews and, and any article or anything to do with you know those heavy metal, metal I'll maniacs bet. kerrang yeah i'll bet i'm gonna do a little i'm gonna do a little experiment right while i've got you now i'm gonna go on to um metal archives and I'm um, going to see if um, we've got some DBC reviews within the last, let's have a look. Maybe for within the, the last single? few years. Maybe. Oh, there we go. DBC, there's a nice live picture of you. Um, reviews. Um, oh, a whole bunch of them. There we go. These um, guys are shite. <laughs> There's there's reviews going back to 2004, from 2004, 2007, 2008, 2017, 2018, 2020, 2014. Reviews so, of, of like the, the music, like the albums or singles. Uh, there's there's reviews of there's a review of Universe from 2007. There's a oh, review wow. of Universe from 2017. Okay. There's a review of Universe from 2018. Dude, I'm going. I'm I'll me I'll message you this link now. Oh yeah, I'll check this metal uh, archives things. I'm always curious to see what people say. A lot of them, you know, say the same type of thing. And th th there's some people are like, what the hell is the universe? It was, uh, it was a, that album just blows me away whenever I hear it. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, but I, I, I love it. I just, I, you know, it's like, I, we put, we put a, um, we put an album out in 1990 with a pink cover. So obviously we broke thrash metal law. You know, we had <laughs> pink metal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like we we well, actually, while we're on the video, that's that's the tour poster. So okay. it was it was it was pink. And um and on Metal Archives, there's a review of the album from like about 2017, 2018 saying the the album cover is pink. This is unacceptable. And I was like, it's 28 years ago, dude. Like, move on. You know, oh, yeah. can't believe that like the same buttons are being pushed all these years later. Yeah, imagine a Metallica's Black album was the Pink album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not going down well. That's not going down <laughs> well at all. Um, well, that so, was brave uh, of you. What what made you think of Pink? Uh, well, the the album was called Obnoxious, and um, oh okay, and our drummer had the idea that Pink and Cyan are two colors that if you put them together. They're, they're difficult for your eyes to separate the colors and it creates a blur. Um, so it was the pink cover and Obnoxious was written in cyan. Um, oh and God. absolutely like, nobody yeah. got what we were talking about. Um, and we it just got absolutely, we just got hammered for having a pink album cover. I was just <laughs> like, yeah. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the thrash metal scene in the late 80s, early 90s. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, to, but, I'm gonna have to Google that. I'm like, <laughs> I, oh, oh dear, yeah. you, see, you, see, you see lots of abuse for that. Um, so when you were um, like when you when you split back in the day, was that was that a well the scene's dying, so we're dying with it kind of thing, or was that more a sort of do you know what we're done? Uh, well, yeah, we um, well we released Universe, and then uh, they wanted demos for our third release. We're gonna we, we were signed for six albums. So they wanted demos for, so we went in and did uh, three songs and then they're like, uh, okay, this is okay. Uh, could we send us some more? So we knew right there that something was up. So we recorded another three songs. And then uh, at that time, we we're unfortunate. There was a huge recession and they cut back a lot of bands. Combat got released. Most of the, they wanted to keep bands. I think that were selling over 50,000 records or something. I think we were at like 30,000. So they're, they're like, oh, you know, you guys, sorry. So the, so we just got kicked off the label. Then we had interest with some other labels, just never worked out. And then uh, I think Phil moved to Toronto, and that was just uh, just ended right there. So yeah, then, yeah. We 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 tried again to you know write some songs with Jerry, and then and then Jerry unfortunately passed away in '94. Was it? So yeah. Then it is. There's no point. And then yeah, it just you've fizzled you out. Yeah, yeah. You've lost a couple of band members over the years, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, and the drummer just died a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. 
I, so it's, there's, it's, just Phil and I left. We're the, we're the Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons of Kiss. Like Kiss, <laughs> we just get other oh. people to play with us. Oh, that's a, that that that's a horrible comparison. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please tell me you're not yet another one of these North American bands that like Kiss. No, yeah, well, I, I grew up on Kiss. My God, as a teenager, ah. I was like favorite band. My God, the 1976. That's a that album destroyer blew us away. Yeah. Oh man, I and mean, yeah. honestly. It, it, yeah. I, they never really i mean you know yeah they they'll play you know arenas in the uk but they never they've never been the phenomenon outside the us really um, yeah. that they are in the uk and oh, um okay. they, i didn't know that I yeah they, they, they were, yeah they, they i mean you know in the states they're like they were part of the yeah. culture oh yeah 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 you mean canada they came up they always came up yeah yeah, yeah. We were, oh my god, god, I was like a teenager when that happened, so it was different, you know. But uh, I'll, I'll, anyway, that, uh, I just made that reference because Phil, Phil always says that too, is how they always get the like, different players. You know, you got the two original <laughs> members, and then you just get different guys <laughs> to come in and help us. Well, at this point, at this point with um, with Acid Rain, I'm I'm the Dave fucking Mustang. I'm the only one from the from the, the original from the first band, time yeah. round. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's go. like I'm I'm the well, he must be difficult to work with then. <laughs> yeah, but you, well, you can relate then. Yeah, but yeah, Jerry, Jerry passed away in 1994, and then Jeff just a few years ago. Unfortunately, uh, he got sick. Both of them, both of them, uh, gone too soon. Yeah, and it's it, and, great players, especially the drummer. The drummer Jeff was like special. He was an original drummer. A lot of drummers love DBC's first album. Though. Both. But albums, it's incredible right? for me. Um, it only happened to me. Um, we only lost one member uh, of the band, and um, that only happened to me just after lockdown. Um, we lost our original bass player Ian, and um, not to, due to COVID or uh, no, no, no. Okay, um, okay. And oh. I, I really really it hit me way harder than i than i'd than i'd imagined um, yeah it's like a brother eh? like a band yeah. makes become brothers you know what i mean like family it's 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 hard to explain to mm -hmm. to to somebody if you've never been in a band it's right. it's hard to explain it also does it also does sound a bit sort of you know oh i'm an artist love you wouldn't understand you know and it's like it's no it's not that you know it, it's it's just it's ethereal you can't you can't put your finger on it i i remember thinking like it, it's it's it, it was really traumatic it was like losing a family member and and i just couldn't i couldn't explain it uh it was really really i remember we we played a we played bloodstock and i, in, and I introduced a song and dedicated it to him and it was in 2021. It was it was the it was the bloodstock that was allowed to happen. It wasn't allowed in 2020, and I introduced it to him, and I and I just felt this wave of emotion, and I had to like bury my head in a towel because I knew there was like there's a good chance I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lose it here and start crying, wow. um, and I, it just it came from nowhere, and it's um whenever I speak to anybody in a band who's who's lost a member, everybody is always the same it's like yeah it, it's it's just it's hard it's really hard yeah especially especially jay because like jay was like my best friend from grade five so we grew up together it was jay, yeah. jay and i's vision like you know we want to play this kind of music so we went through it all together from day one i mean from high school playing in a high school an abandoned high school to so that was a shock the end of getting aids yeah and uh fortunately that a horrible death i saw him the day before so it was really bad and, Oh man! Well, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Ian, our bass player, was somebody that you know I went to school with. Um, okay, yeah, and, especially um, with your old friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like they they even predate the band, and you know, and and it's it's just it's horrible. It's absolutely yeah. horrible. And like you say, you know, just be, you know, taken before their time. And I mean, he was a he was an absolutely a, a incredible musician and a, and a you know a lovely lovely guy. Um, and it just seems, yeah. It's it's always the good ones. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. The people, the people you think, do you know what? I really wouldn't mind if uh, if he accidentally had an accident. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's never them. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, definitely always a few idiots out there. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, as regards sort of like you know merch and stuff like that, are you um, uh, are you 
are you able to knock out merch you know to people all over the world um we had we were selling a few shirts and you know we do a few runs when we were playing some shows in town so we'd sell them at our shows and then whatever was left over i would like put them on our site and sell them but uh, lately i haven't done it uh, if you wanted merch, we were we were signed up with a company, uh, Seasons of the Mist, in North America and in Europe. You just oh, go yeah. to that site. Yeah, you go to that site, and then our stuff is there. So cool. that, that that takes care of that. And and I just got tired of shipping and everything, but I, we do have some CDs that I still sell on the site. Uh, the, the Dive Bomb did um, re release the two albums, the first uh, album and Universe, and as a, a collector's edition with like foil he put foil on the on the both covers you know on the u card the, the, the card that was on with a booklet inside with an interview so it was oh, really cool. uh, really 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 nice packaging so we have a few of those we're still, still selling those and i still have tons of the 2005 release of both albums that we did we ended up doing um, a commercial for fido here in canada which is like a, a tele te telephone company and they paid us for using genesis explosion you can see it on youtube uh, they gave us some cash and we took that money and just re-released the album. So I still have a few of those, but as for t-shirts, not really, like I said, just let the other company do it, but maybe I'll do a run yeah. one day if we ever play in town, you know, to have yeah. it, you know. I, but, that's, but that's a great idea, like farm it out to them, get them to do it. Um, yeah. And also also using the, using the money from the advert to pay for, uh, to pay for getting the, you know, getting those albums re-released is a, it, you know, it's a nice symbiotic kind yeah, of thing. I, I had it hooked up with the, there's a Printful as a company that I had the site looked linked up to that, you know, you upload all your artwork. So they take care of printing it and shipping it, but they take such a, a large, you know, percentage that you'd have to, you have to charge like 40 bucks a t-shirt. And then we got a lot of people like, I'm not spending 40 bucks. It's not even a concert shirt. Yeah. It's nothing, you know, it's like, it's for diehard fans. You know, what could I tell you? They, you know, we were getting like five bucks, you know, yeah. Not even, not even. Well, also, also uh, shipping. I think there was one shirt that I sold that we had to pay. <laughs> oh, I, there's also shipping kills yeah. it. I mean, um... yeah, and then they want the taxes, the shipping, oh. uh, and then their cut. And then I swear to God, I had to pay like you know a couple of bucks for selling the shirt. <laughs> so yeah, well, I, I found um, I had to pay for it too. I, I found a fellow legacy band who shall remain nameless. I found their site the other day, and I was like, uh, they they twenty dollars for a shirt, and it was a really cool shirt, and I was like, oh man. Definitely having this. It's twenty five. It was twenty five dollars to ship the fucking thing. It's now oh, yeah. forty five dollars. Yeah, it's like you're on eBay or something. You've been yeah, like, yeah. So it's like shipping fifty dollars. What the? Yeah. And yeah. and the thing is as well is I know that that shipping, I will get stung for taxes as well. Yeah. To come. Yeah. So that's not the taxes. That's just shipping. I will then then the UK government will stick some more money on top of that. That I'll yeah. have to pay when the package arrives. So I'm like, with the best will in the world, guys, you know, I'm not going to be buying that. It just doesn't work out, which is a real shame, you know. Um, it's it just shipping seems to have gone crazy post COVID. Uh, like, see, like, yeah, I think t shirts like going to be at least fifteen to twenty dollars. You got to pay for the packaging, of course. Yeah. Time. Yeah, 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 no, it's, it's it's absolutely crazy. So, um, so if people want it, is is Bandcamp the best place for people to find DBC? Yeah, if stuff? you want to get the singles, I think Bandcamp's the best because you, look, they're a dollar each. Plus, Bandcamp gets a cut of that, so we're not even getting a dollar. Yeah. So, if you want the singles, yeah, it's going to cost you two bucks. Go on there. Of yeah. course, you have the option of paying whatever you want. So, if you want to pay twenty bucks a single, we'll take it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like two bucks, two bucks a single, and then uh, the CDs are there too. And I, I think there's even a link for the T-shirts. It might, I think it, it's hooked up to um, the seasons in the mist. Oh, cool, cool. cool. Well, look, Eddie, um, I, I can't yeah. thank you enough for coming on and doing this. Um, you know, we've dodged, we've dodged around, but we've made it happen. That's the main thing. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it happened, Howard. I apologize for all the times that. Uh, on my end that I couldn't make it, but uh, oh, at least uh, dude, got, and right it. back at you. You know, I messed you about, you messed me about, Hey, it's the um, music business. It's it's amazing. Yeah, we yeah, got this, this I, I had an alarm. I had an alarm this morning. There's no way I was forgetting this time. <laughs> we're outside. We're Brilliant. running errands. I'm like, I got to get back. She's like, we're going to get back. And we, we got back. Hey, hey, look, it takes five or six years to get a couple of songs down. So it's it's yeah. going to take five or six attempts just to get an interview done, isn't it? <laughs> well, thanks for not backing out. Though. I'm really, you can lose it. Hey. It's, so it's like, oh, Eddie from DVC, who cares? You know, but, uh, <laughs> no, plenty of people care. And I'm really looking yeah, forward good, to putting good. this out, Eddie. I really do. And, um, right, you know, one legacy act to another. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you very much. Okay, cheers, mate. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.